You guys have been asking me to make a video on map boxes for a while now, and although I haven't actually produced one yet, it's not from a lack of trying. Over the last several months, I've been testing the offerings from different brands, trying to find a product that I actually like enough to recommend, and I'm happy to report that I finally found one, and they even have a parallel product for photographers. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and I'm stuck in a glass case of emotions. So before we get into the products, let's talk a little business. This is a sponsored video. Now I can't speak for every channel out there, but I can tell you how I go about making a paid video. First, the company needs to send me the product and I need to test it. And if I like it, I'll recommend it. And if I don't, I send it back. It's that simple. I've left a lot of money on the table this year by refusing to make paid videos on products that I didn't love or care about. My opinion can't be bought, and this method of testing before being paid allows me to remain as objective as possible. The truth is, I would have eventually tested this map box anyway as part of my ongoing map box quest, and I would have still liked it as much as I do now. The only difference is, I got it early, and Polar Pro can use this video to help push early sales to their product instead of waiting for me to get around to it. That's what they're really paying for, getting moved up to the top of my production queue to time my video with their release. And that's also why you'll often see five or 10 videos on the same product in your sub boxes. And if that's happening to you with this video, I apologize. But in the case of these kits from Polar Pro, it's all worth it because they're fantastic. Now, like I said, I've been testing quite a few map boxes this year, including the offerings from Tilta, Bright Tangerine, as well as the ones from Shape and JTZ that seem like rebranded Genus Tech products. But I don't know actually who came first there, but it's not important. What is important is that while all those products are adequate, and in some cases pretty good, like the Misfit Atom or Tilta, this popular swing away, I just didn't love them. I found minor issues or inconsistencies with them, and I felt like I wasn't getting enough bang for my buck. Because the biggest problem with map boxes is that they're too damn expensive for what they are. Well, I'd say that Polar Pro fixed that. Now, don't get me wrong, you're still going to be dropping some cash if you want one of these full kits. But unlike those previous models I mentioned, with Polar Pro, I didn't suffer any of the minor annoyances, and I do feel like you're actually getting your money's worth because these kits come with filters. And not just any filters, but the same quality circular polarizers and variable NDs I praise so heavily back in April for the screw on type. You're getting the same glass here that you'd get with those Peter McKinnon variable NDs. So all the things I said about the clarity and color accuracy and controlling abnormalities still apply. Variable neutral density isn't something you usually see in matte boxes, but I appreciate the novelty because this system is all about being fast and lightweight. And in fact, it's the lightest matte box system in this class, but to achieve that, third-party compatibility was sacrificed. These filters are custom fitted to these proprietary Polar Pro trays, so you can't use your own standard four millimeter filters because these filters are only half as thick to keep the weight down. So this is a closed system, if you will. But I think we're gonna see more products from Polar Pro in the coming months to expand on this system. I can't speak to this for certain, but I did hear the words diffusion filter thrown around a few times. So we'll probably be looking at more than just neutral density for this system soon. Right now though, you can get this kit with the matte box, the top flag, the two to five stop, ND and the circular polarizer for only $6.99, but I'm told they'll be giving a further $100 off for the first seven days. Like I said, if it was just the map box for $6.99, the price wouldn't really be worth talking about because most comparable products go for five to $600. But the fact that this one comes with the circular polarizer and the ND, as well as some basic adapters and accessories and a carrying case, makes this a much better value than most of the competition. And as usual, you're getting Polar Pro's exceptional packaging and attention to detail. The build quality of this unit is fantastic. It's great looking, smartly designed and exceptionally well machined. And everything I've said so far applies to the Summit system as well, because as I mentioned in the intro, there's two product lines of this launch. The Base Camp, which is the video map box system, and the Summit, which is the landscape photography system. And in terms of build, packaging, quality of the glass, and the focus on lightweight design, including those proprietary filter trays, both are identical. It's just the usage intention of the products that are different. But why don't we build out both kits and go through all that? All right, so I figured we just unbox all the stuff and then build it up as we go so we can see what comes in the kits and how they work together. And this is just sort of a demo rig that I made so that I think we should be able to use it for every purpose. This is 15 millimeter rod system and that way we can check the rod supports and how all that works for clearance. We've got the uh, GH5 on here and this is the Sigma 60 millimeter F1.4 so that's a 67 millimeter front filter thread. And for that, I've got the Polar Pro step up rings, the ones that I'm always talking about, you know, get all your lenses up to say 82 millimeters and then you can just buy one filter. So we're gonna do the same thing here. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is just attach this step up ring so that the front filter diameter is 82 millimeters. Okay, so let's get the first box cooking here. So we've got, what do we got here? This is the, this is the base camp. So this is the matte box. So let's open it up. Like I was saying, I like the packaging on the Polar Pro stuff. All right, so let's open this up. This is what it looks like inside here. Everything comes in its own little pouch. So we've got the CPL and a little bag there. 
and then the two to five stop ND. And then I also have a six to nine stop ND. The six to nine stop comes in its own box here. Now you only get one of the variable NDs in this kit. In this case, it's the two to five, I think. I don't think they have a six to nine kit, but the six to nine is available for purchase extra, which I think is $200. And then you've got this pack here, which has the actual map box in it. So we'll go ahead and we'll open that up. And I like, I like the packaging, I like how everything, like this is really compact. They were saying it's like the lightest map box in its class. So it's super compact, fits nicely in this carrying case. And then you could put other stuff in here too if you wanted. So right now I've just got the, you know, instructions and warranty card that come with it, but you could put little things in there if you need it and you could have it in this tight little pack. So we'll take out the CPL and we'll take out the two to five stop as well. And then we'll just close this up. And all the Polar Pros boxes are really, they've got, just little nice touches on them. I don't know. I like good boxes. These are the the rail mounts. Now this is the regular LWS one for the lightweight support. This is regular size. That's what this is. But then they also have the studio one, which is much wider. So you're looking at about that wide versus this one here. You can get both of these options. They're both purchased extra. Uh, obviously I'm going to be using this one, but both are available. And then this is also a series of clamps, which are for sort of the odd sized cine lenses. So we got 95 millimeters, 87, 110 millimeters, 80 millimeters, 104 millimeters, and 100 millimeters. This is another extra purchase, by the way, but I just want to let you know that they have sort of a box that has all the... So if you have a whole bunch of different cine lenses with different sizes, then you can just get one of these. Should cover all of it. And then the one that comes in the matte box is the 82 millimeter one, which is what we're going to put on right now. So we just thread this on to our step-up ring, like so. Now you have to make sure that you put the CPL with the text facing up, facing you. If you put it the other way, it's going to go weird from like yellow to blue when you turn around because the polarization doesn't make any sense. So for the CPL, there's a lever here that you have to pull back and then there's a notch down there and you just want it to kind of rest behind both things at the same time. And then you can let the, the switch go and that should hold it in place. And then we can put that on top of this and then tighten it down with this screw right here. And then the flag on the top here, you can loosen this little wing nut and then you can lift this up. And what I like about this is that it kind of works like a lens cap because it closes all the way down nice and flat and there's a little bit of almost like a magnetic type sort of latch at the bottom. I don't think it's magnetic. I think it just that that's when it lines up perfectly, but it feels almost like a magnet. And then you have a pretty good seal on it. So you can always just leave this on, like I said, like a lens cap, but we can lift it up and leave it as sort of a top flag or we can actually loosen it off. And I think if you lift this, you can pull it out and then, you know, we can rock it without it if we want. And I think I'll do that for now to make the rest of the demo a little bit easier to see. So now we have one tray here, which we can put in either our six to nine or our two to five stop ND. And so we'll throw the two to five stop that comes with it. So that should slide in like that. And then that's pretty much it. Now when we adjust the CPL here, we're actually changing the density from two stops to five stops. Now there's a static amount of ND, obviously, which you can see just by holding it up, but the variability comes from adjusting the polarizer at the same time. That reminds me of an important point that that bozo didn't mention, which is that when making a variable ND this way, you won't have hard stops. Remember how I said that these filters deliver the same results as the Peter McKinnon screw-on filters? Well, they do optically, but it's not quite the same functionally because you can actually over over adjust the CPL and get that crazy blue cross pattern mess that you get from a variable ND without stops. But putting those hard stops into this system would severely limit the usefulness of the circular polarizer on its own. That being said though, there is a hidden advantage here because I found that you can actually go past the advertised ranges on the VNDs and still get a pretty usable image. If we look at the six to nine stop filter, for example, here's what it looks like at six stops and then at nine stops. Pretty similar, only slight temperature shifting, which is normal anytime you use a polarizer. Remember to always white balance after setting your filters. But even when we move up to 10 stops, the blue invasion isn't as bad as I expected, and I would say this is still pretty usable. It's not until 11 stops that the blue becomes too strong, in my opinion. So while I wouldn't necessarily recommend running them that high, it's good to know that you can go over a little if you need to in a pinch. And the same is true for the two to five stop filter. Here's an image of my light dome with no filters on, and here it is with four stops of reduction using the CPL and the two to five stop. Looks pretty much identical. And even if we exceed the range a little by moving up to 5.66 stops, it's still quite good. And then at 6.5 stops is when it starts to get a little rough. 
Also, I should mention that the rectangular filter portion of this combo does work on its own for light reduction even without the CPL installed. With the 2 to 5 stop, you'll get similar reduction to a 1 stop fixed ND, and the 6 to 9 stop filter will give you a flat 6 stops when not using the circular polarizer. So that's pretty cool from a versatility standpoint. I was also impressed with the clarity of these filters. Here's a comparison of an image with no filters against one with both the 2 to 5 stop and the CPL installed. And as you can see, the filtered image only has the most minor reduction in sharpness that isn't even noticeable on the really zooming in, so no worries there. Alright, let's let Unboxy McGee over here finish his demonstration by telling us how light the matte box feels. And it is insanely light, so with just the camera on like this, it doesn't feel like there's really much on the end at all, and it doesn't really change the balance too much either. So, that's pretty awesome. And that's, that's its main selling feature, is the fact that it's variable, it's run and gun, and it's extremely light. Now something about this map box that I like that's annoyed me about other map boxes that I've tried is the rail mount. Now, like I said, this is an extra part, but the other ones that I've tried, their rail mounts either weren't adjustable enough or didn't really provide the support that I needed. And I know that I just said this is like a run and gun setup, but I like having the option to attach a rail mount because sometimes I use really long lenses when I'm not going run and gun and they have adapters and everything on them, they add quite a bit of weight, so normally I just have a lens support. But if I'm gonna put a matte box on, I don't really wanna run a lens support and a matte box and fill up the rail with just <laughs> supports. So usually I want something that can do both jobs. And that's what I like about this is that it can, even though it's super light, this has quite a bit of flexibility to it, the amount that you can adjust it up and down. So on the bottom of the matte box is this sort of custom adapter piece that the rail support goes into, and then there's just sort of a thumb screw that Holds it in, holding this in a really stupid, stupid way to show you. Uh, so once we get that nice and tight, then this can go on the rails. And as you can see, you're getting, I would say, almost an inch or like two and a half centimeters of height adjustment that you can make here. So it goes on nicely, where I've experimented with other ones before where the play is, is very short. And because I've shown you in some of my previous builds that I like to do double quick releases so I can take the camera out, but I can also take the rails off really quickly, that makes my build higher than the allowances of other map boxes I've tried would allow. So right away I got the rail system for this to see if by chance it fixed that, and magically it did. So I was really, really happy about that. So once we get this on, we'll do the same thing. We'll just tighten this down, and then there's another little wing nut down here, and that's what sets the height adjustment. And then you can turn these thumb screws to secure it to the rods. And then now it's doubling as a lens support. And now this is like really, really strong. So say you were using a really heavy duty, you know, focus motor or you had a bunch of things attached, this is not going to put any play on your mount at all and everything is like really, really locked down and I like having that versatility. And then if you wanted to trim it down even further, there's these clips on the side that you can just pop out like that and then you can take the majority of the box part of the matte box off and then you're basically just running a filter. So that's definitely the lightest, most compact variable ND setup you could have that can cover all the way up to 115 millimeter cine lenses. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps it up for this kit. I'll give you a little rapid fire takedown so you can see it all again. And then we'll switch over to the Summit system, the landscape filter system, and see if anything's different over there. So basically all we have to do is loosen the thumb screws and loosen this one, this thumb screw up top, and then this whole thing should slide off nice and easy. Again, you'll just have to take my word for it, but with all the different matte boxes I tried, it's never been that easy to get it off and on, so that is really, really great. All right, so now we've got the Summit filter set, which is the exact same idea as the other one. Same exact packaging, love it. And then in here, we get a similar idea. So we've got a carrying case. This one's a little bit bigger, I think. Maybe not. And then we've got our ND and our CPL, and then this is a graduated one. And we'll start with the main bag here, which has the kit in it, a little bit of foam to keep it, because this one is not rigid, it's sort of a flexible outer side on this one, so the foam helps with that. And then inside here I have the 77 millimeter version, and the 82 millimeter version is on, and I wanna say that they're the same, but I'll just take a quick peek, no they're not. So you can't use these interchangeably because this one has a groove in it that's designed for the landscape kit so that it can rotate. So you can't use your one for the matte box. You have to attach the special one. Now this one's pretty much the same idea. We have to put the CPL in, which I have over here. I don't know if the CPLs are exactly the same. They look really, really, really similar. So, oh, this one does say Summit on it though, so it's possible that they are unique. But the same idea, there's a little tab here that you push back 
and make sure you put the text in the right way and release the tab. And then we can put that on here with the thumb screw to the top. Make sure it's in all the way. But if you loosen it a little bit, then you have the ability to rotate it as you need if you wanted to use your graduated from the side or you know rotate your filters around. But we'll just keep it at 12 o'clock and lock it in. And then let's go ahead and use this one. So the one that comes with it is an ND64, which is a six stop fixed ND. And it looks like this. Now this one's using square filters where the matte box is using rectangular filters. And like I mentioned, the they're custom fit. So they're not exactly, like they're, they're kind of four by 5.6 and these are kind of four by four, but they're not exactly that. And they use custom polar pro trays, which you, you need to use. And so now we've got a six stop fixed ND in front of our CPL. The only other real difference is that on the Summit system, the CPL is adjusted on the left and the right side, where on the matte box, you adjust the CPL on the top. So this one has two access points left to right, and that was just on the top, kind of like you would if you were, I guess, adjusting it for variable ND. And then this one allows you to position it based more on where you want the density in the frame. Obviously, you're using the CPL differently on a landscape kit. It's whether you want to put the polarizer in the water or a certain corner of your sky. So that's why those are set up differently. And then if we go over to this filter, so we can show you the full setup. So this is the grad that comes with it. This is an ND4 grad, two stop soft grad. So it's very soft in the transition all the way through. And smartly, the tabs are on the opposite side. So the grad tab is gonna be on the left and the fixed ND is gonna be on the right. That way they don't really interfere with each other. So there's thumb screws on this side here that you can use for locking down the filters so they don't move. I think the top one, yeah, the top one is for the grad, the front most one, and then the bottom of the thumb screws is for the rear most one. In this case, it's the fixed ND. And then we have enough flexibility in the position that when we have it all the way down, we're putting the grad starting at about the lower third horizon line if you want to do that. And if you put it so that it's flush with the bottom and sticking at the top, then we're gonna have the grad at the upper third horizon. So that's pretty much usually what you would need. And if you you know marry them in between, then you do have some flexibility if you wanna go closer to like a midline horizon. And it works really well. And if you're happy with the position, then like I said, you can use the thumb screws to tighten them down and then they should lock in place pretty well. And then we have the thumb screw on the top that we can use for rotating this. So if you wanted to do a bit of a side grad for whatever reason, maybe you had some of that funky light coming in over here and you had trees on their side, you can you know, balance it out like that and you get full rotation there. And it doesn't seem to feel janky at any point with the rotating it, like it, it remains pretty fluid without feeling like it's gonna fall off. I feel pretty confident shaking the hell out of it. So that's pretty much it. You get the main holder in its own pouch and then you get the ND64 the ND4 grad and the CPL all in the kit. And then there's gonna be a whole series of, you know, add-ons. If you want if you wanted to buy it individually a la carte, they have that option as well. But this is what you get in this one big box. They're very intuitive and easy to use. I think the design looks great. The build quality is stellar. I'm in love with this matte box. And like I said, the combination with the rail support is the best I've used. No complaints in terms of usability. As you can see here, really like the packaging, really like everything that you get, very happy. All right, so let's wrap up. These are great systems, but I think it's important to know who you are as a customer. When I test products like these, I can't help but compare them to what I've seen before. And when you do that, it would seem easy to fault Polar Pro for using proprietary thinner filter trays or opting for variable NDs instead of fixed plates. But I managed to catch myself when doing that and realize that if I haven't liked any of the previous matte boxes that much, why would I want Polar Pro to make theirs the same way? I wouldn't. And their desire to do something different has actually fixed a bunch of issues that I had with the competition. Now, if you prefer bigger, heavier systems and are okay with sacrificing speed to be able to use fixed NDs and other specific four millimeter filters that you love, then maybe this isn't the product for you. Although there's nothing stopping Polar Pro from using fixed NDs in the system, I just don't think that it's the concept they're going for. That being said, I definitely pay for a diffusion filter that plugs into the circular filter holder with a four stop fixed ND rectangular in front. Just saying Polar Pro, if you make it, I'd buy it. But regardless, when I combine the build quality with the fact that the system is lighter, faster, and less expensive than the competition, once you factor in the price of filters, and considering that Polar Pro's filters are excellent, take all those benefits and add in that they've managed to remove all the things that annoyed me about the other systems I've tried, and we've got a product that brilliantly fills a gap in the market.
But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining, or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, then you were probably too busy overcranking your shutter. Alright. I'm done.